This is John on For the Patch and John She's Beat. Tonight I have the pleasure of being on the beat with Stacy Lane Wilson, filmmaker, author, and more. How are you, Stacy? I'm good. And I'm more, apparently. You are more. You're a lot more. We're gonna we're gonna get into all that. First of all, you came from or you come from a uh, an entertainment family. Your father was in the ventures, founding member, right. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ventures. Your mother was an actress. How was it growing up in that environment? Well, it was different, I guess, but maybe not that much different from other kids growing up in the Hollywood area at that time. So maybe it's not that unique, depending on the location. But um, my parents divorced when I was really young. So I was raised mostly by my mom. And she was, um, as you mentioned, she did do some acting. She was in some uh, B movies like uh, Sex Kittens Go to College and <laughs> the you know, she did stuff like that, those little uh, nudie cutie movies. And she was also a pinup model, but she was a writer first and foremost. So I think that's where I get my desire to write and my love of books from. Um, she was one of the first female editors of Confidential magazine. So she wrote for magazines, gossip columns, books, biographies, and then she uh, segued into writing romance novels. And I, I read that you started writing yourself. You, you got a, your actual first professional writing job when you were 12. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, I had started writing for a horse magazine because I was a really horse crazy kid. And um, back in those days, you could have horses in the San Fernando Valley in your backyard in Southern California. So my mom got me my first pony when I was six and um, I just really took to it. And I loved writing and writing. So I kind of turned those two into uh, a mini profession. I was very enterprising. I love to uh, sort of make money from the things I love. So when I was a kid, I would um, buy untrained ponies and then get them gentle for other kids and sell oh. them at a profit. So um, I would write stories about how to train your pony. And I got um, actually a column in Horse and Horseman magazine. And did you know, did you want to be in, in the entertainment business or the writing business at that age? Or did it, was it just kind of that's how it developed? Yeah, I mean, that was sort of my environment. So I gravitated toward that. I wouldn't say that I like being in the entertainment business per se. I don't really want to be in front of the camera or acting or anything like that. I like to be behind the scenes writing and directing. And one of the big projects you did, and, and I love the band, um, you did a documentary on, on your father's band, The Ventures. Uh, again, as I said, a rock and roll Hall of Famer. Um, a Labor of Love, surely. How uh, Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? Well, that was quite an undertaking. I knew that it would be because there has never been a documentary about The Ventures prior to my taking it on. There had been concert films and things like that, but a comprehensive historical documentary hadn't been done, which is surprising considering the band's accomplishments and their worldwide fan base. But um, when I took it on, I had directed a couple of narrative things. So that's like a scripted movie or scripted short film. So a documentary really is a completely different animal. It's a totally whole other undertaking. And um, it was a labor of love with uh, emphasis on both words, labor and love. But I'm really glad that um, my dad got to see it before he passed away and he um, he approved. So that's the biggest uh, accomplishment of all. I was going to ask, what, what were the reactions from your family on that? Yeah, fortunately, um, yeah, at least as far as I know, <laughs> everybody <laughs> loved it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a feel good movie. There's no dirt or any, you know, like things about breakdowns or fortunately, the ventures were not like the Rolling Stones or, <laughs> you know, any bands like that, where they had drug flame outs and, you know, all kinds of crazy things going on. The ventures were all about the music. And so that's what I really wanted to concentrate on was also how influential they were and are on music that I grew up loving. So I'm really into um, Led Zeppelin and The Who and uh, Judas Priest groups like that is what I love. And then to find out that they were um, 
influenced by the ventures is really gratifying. And I actually got to interview Jimmy Page for the documentary. Oh. And of course, John Fogarty, Credence Clearwater Revival, he um, he inducted the ventures into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So he was happy to talk about it. Um, Randy Bachman from um, Bachman Turner Overdrive um, and the guess who, I mean, like these iconic guitarists all point to the ventures as one of their main influences. So that was really interesting for me as a filmmaker and a music fan. And of course, everybody, I mean, I know when I was a kid and all that, the, the iconic intro to, you know, Wipeout, mm -hmm. everyone did that. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, the Surfaris did write that song, but the Ventures had a big hit with it. Oh, absolutely. So, so I mean, like I said, you know, I, I remember in high school, I, you know, we would just drum it on our desk, everybody. And, you know, that was years after it came out. But still, you know, it's such an iconic bit of rock and roll history. But you've done a lot more that I mean, that that in itself, that your documentary and that in itself is a career for some people. But you've done a lot more. You've written a lot of books. You've done you've produced and written some movies. Um, and the thing that impressed me about your resume, if you will, um, you kind of cover all sorts of genres. You, you did a little bit of comedy. You did a little bit of horror, a little bit of science fiction, a little bit of crossover of all of it. Um how do you like how do you decide what you want to write or does something come to you and then it just that's how it is well at the heart of it is music so even um my so i have like a rock and roll sci-fi comedy about um, a member of the 27 club a fictional member of the 27 club who comes back to life in kind of a weird science kooky movie and then i also have um a zombie horror movie but one of the characters is really a movie buff and she loves music and she talks about Mark Bolin and David Bowie so I always try to infuse things that I like into many various different genres um, one of my book series Immortal Confessions is about vampires but one of them is a rock star so pretty much anything that you read or watch of mine is going to have a love of music incorporated into it so I feel like that's the through line. Do you have any uh, major influences either in the writing or in the filmmaking? Well, I'm a voracious uh, movie fan and reader. Um, my mom had a massive library in her office. So I was reading adult level books as a kid. And I love um, true crime, nonfiction, biographies. Um, watched a lot of movies growing up to um, everything from 1930s screwball comedies to 1980s slashers. So um, I guess it all kind of steeps in me like a tea bag. And, you know, I, I kind of absorb all of that. So I, I can't really point to any one particular influence, but I think it all kind of informs what I do. And tell us a little bit about your latest book about the rock and roll stories. Yeah, I have two. Actually, I have them here so I can show you. So my two latest ones are um, Rock and Roll Nightmares, True Stories, Volume 1 and 2. And these are, if um, you're familiar with um, the book Hollywood Babylon by Absolutely. Kenneth Anger, right? That was a big thing. And I read that when I was a kid. And I was looking for something like that to read just for my own pleasure um, and edification about rock stars because Hollywood Babylon is about movie stars and just kind of hits all the highlights of these really strange, bizarre and tragic events that happen to them. And as I was searching for a book like that, I couldn't find one. So I thought, well, if I'm looking for a book like that, then maybe rock fans would like to read, you know, that book. So I started with um, an idea just to write one book like that. It, it encompasses um, the 27 Club, which I mentioned before, which is um, an enduring uh, sort of fascinating myth in the rock world. Um, plane crashes, you know how rock, star rock stars always seem to die in plane right. crashes and just crazy um, stories about Keith Moon, who's one of the wildest rock stars ever, Keith Richards, who almost died 10 times, you know, there's, so there's a lot of stories about different rockers in the books and um, one book just wasn't enough to fit all of the stories. So that's why there's two volumes and um, yeah, it's just true crime crazy stories about arrest, um, 
there's a chapter called Been Caught Stealing about um, plagiarism and some of the lawsuits that have gone on about uh, that, or even instruments that were stolen. I had mentioned um, a few minutes ago, Randy Bachman from Bachman Turner Overdrive. His guitar was stolen in the mid 1970s, and he was finally reunited with it just recently. Wow. So there's a lot of stories l like that, too. So it's I would say it's like true crime and tragedy. And there are some uplift, uh, excuse me, uplifting stories, too. So it's not all doom and gloom. But I just found it just interesting subject. And I really wanted to kind of cover that for myself and others. Well, one of the cool things I noticed, uh, the books are thick. The second book is even thicker than the first. So <laughs> right, yeah, like, I know. It's almost 500 pages, yeah, here. Yeah, th this isn't like just a, a you know, a, a little pamphlet that you're putting out. And I mean, this is in-depth. This is thick, good reading. But I have to ask you the question, of course, will there be a third? <laughs> well, I don't know if I'll do a, a True Stories 3, but I do have quite a few books right here that will be coming out soon. Um, definitely one that I want to write is um, about songs that were written about real deaths or real murders and then go into the backstories about those songs, what inspired them. Um, there's also an idea to do uh, a book about killer nightclubs, like the CBGBs or the whiskey, strange and bizarre events that have happened at those places where some bands that we know and love played or broke. Um, haunted recording studios. There are a lot of paranormal stories um, related to the rock and roll world. And then, of course, Love Gone Wrong. <laughs> I think that <laughs> might be two books, yeah, about like crazy breakups and bands that didn't get along. And Fleetwood Mac will definitely be in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just like uh, how many times uh, Mick Jagger's been married. And I think between the Rolling Stones, there's like, I don't know, 40 children. So, you know, there's wow. a lot of relationships there to talk about. And so that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to doing the research on those. But my next Rock and Roll Nightmares book is called 28. And it's uh, fiction with myself and other writers joining in on speculative uh, stories about what would have happened if the 27 Club would have lived. Wow, that sounds cool. That sounds very cool. Yeah. Oh. Now, obviously, in their, in their, you're, you know, you're in the music industry in one way or another. Have you met any of your, I assume you would have met some of your favorites over the years? I have, yeah. Well, I worked as an entertainment reporter um, on the red carpet for the Sci-Fi Channel for many, many years. So I have interviewed literally thousands of people. Mm -hmm. I used to write down everyone that I interviewed and. One weekend alone at Comic-Con, I interviewed over 400 people. <laughs> so wow. Wow. the list goes on and on. Yeah. But um, I have interviewed all the biggest stars like um, Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts, uh, Nicole Kidman, George Clooney, people like that. But the ones that always got me the most excited, of course, were the rock musicians. So I've gotten to interview quite a few of them. Um, interviewed Rob Zombie quite a few times because he's a film director as well. Uh, Marilyn Manson. And of course, then I mentioned in my documentary, I have Jimmy Page. And so that was through the Davis Guggenheim documentary, It Might Get Loud. I got to interview him and another huge favorite of mine, Jack White. Um, both on the same day. So that was really exciting. Wow. Yeah. So I have been super lucky and fortunate to be able to get to meet some extremely talented and uh, wonderful people who have inspired me in various ways. So when you're in those moments, do you have a chance to kind of soak it in and go like, I'm doing what I love to do and, you know, kind of surreal? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I do appreciate it. I mean, uh, if it's not Comic-Con, though, where I'm just running, <laughs> Comic-Con was crazy. That's a, that's a four-day event in San Diego that's a, a huge extravaganza where you're interviewing dozens of people, and it's like a conveyor belt of celebrities, so you don't really get a chance to absorb much um, at things like that, but there have been some really great sit-down, in-depth interviews um, where I've gotten to really get more in-depth with people. And I've been pretty lucky. I haven't really had any bad stories to report. Some people, like, for instance, uh, I was warned that Samuel Jackson is 
not fun to interview and that he's really tough. But I interviewed him several times and it was always a, a really fun experience and he was always nice to me. Well, that's awesome to hear. Absolutely. And I, I certainly know what Comic-Con is like. I just actually just came back. Well, last week okay. I was just at uh, C2E2, Chicago's Comic-Con. I did not interview 400 people like you. But I, I interviewed <laughs> you got a about, record to be here. Yeah, I interviewed about 20. But And I thought I was busy. So, you know, 400. Someday I'm going to get out to San Diego Comic-Con because I've been to New York. I've been to all the ones in Chicago and San Diego's on my bucket list. But um, it's eventually. wild. It's fun. Yeah. All the cosplayers that you get to watch go being all decked out and people really get into it. And it's just a really feel good celebration of entertainment and movies, music, everything. Oh, it's absolutely. I love it. I can't. I, I, I wait every year. I've got all of them marked on my calendar. And the next one coming up is uh, is uh, the big Chicago Comic Con in August, but the next nice. big Chicago Comic Con. But anyway, I, I've taken up enough of your time. Before I let you go, tell everybody where they can find more information about you and your books. I know they're on Amazon, and I know you've got a <laughs> website. Are. So yes, Amazon. And if you don't have time to read, they're all on Audible as well. So I do have um, all of the books narrated by professional narrators. And then if anyone wants to find out more, the best sort of jumping off point is my website, which is my name, stacylanewilson.com. And then also there's a Rock and Roll Nightmares website, which is just Rock and Roll Nightmares, but with hyphens in between each word. And then you can go from there. And I have to compliment you. Your website is awesome. It is, oh, it is full of a lot of great information. And it, it's it's you can tell that there's a lot of uh, attention to detail in it. I think it's one of the better websites of all the so-called professional or entertainment or <laughs> authors and all because you find so many people. It's like yeah, I, I gotta I gotta improve it. I gotta get to do. Yours is a very good website. So I just wanted oh, to point you. that well, out. Well, fortunately, I have a little design background, so I'm able to do that, which is nice to kind of infuse my website with my own character as well. <laughs> Well, it's got everything, so everyone should check it out. But Stacy, really, I appreciate your time. It's been a lot of fun learning more about you. I encourage everyone to check out your books and your movies because there's some really cool stuff there. And, and I thank you for your time, and I wish you a great night. All right. Bye. Thank you, Stacy.